Today we're going to take a visit to the ponds. You can have a pond or a stream near your home, or you might go to a park and take a picnic near a pond. But keep your eyes open, because some of the things that live in the water and near the water are rather small. For instance, right here we've got a water bug, and I'll show you how big that can get. Fish, tadpoles, a small frog, snails. This is a, a swan mussel. We can find those. And up here we have damselflies, a crane fly, and this is a caddisfly larva, that little brown looking thing there. But if we go way down the bottom, we have a crayfish. And crayfish, I call them the cleaners of the pond. They have little sweepers underneath them. They sweep the food into their mouth and then they clean up debris. Sometimes it's uh, the waste from the animals that live above and other things, but they keep the pond clean. Now, crayfishes can get rather big. I had one for a long time, and this is how big it got. What you're seeing here is the, the shed of it. There's a, they shed their skin, and that's the hardest part for them, to get their, um, uh, their skin off. And mine shed its skin lots of times, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So he just ate whatever I put in there because he was the cleanup artist. The uh, other thing that should be happening in ponds and creeks even now is frogs and toads hatching. Now, starts out is an egg, and there's a tadpole. Then the tadpole gets two legs, and then the tadpole gets four legs, and you can see the tails getting shorter. Now, this is called a froglet or a toadlet, these two stages. Now, you can see how short the tail is right here on the little froglet, and then there's the adult frog. And their job is to eat insects, and they're actually food for other animals like snakes that might live in the water. Usually they're not very, very big, but you might see a snake in the water. Uh, and uh, water snakes can get pretty big, but some are small like this one. And so these are all part of the community in that water. Now, this is a snail. Now, this one's not alive, but I have one that's in the water. This one I have preserves because when I was, when I used to um, teach uh, more, I would have to preserve some of the things. But you can see his body. And there's the bottom. This is this is called the foot or the rasp. And he just slides along on something green and scrapes it off. And that's his job. So a lot of people don't like them in their gardens because they do scrape the green off the leaves. Other things that you might find when you're walking in the woods where it may be wet, you might find a tadpole. Let's do the water again. The tadpole in the water. Let me get move this over here and then I'll show you that. I have a tadpole and a snail in here. This is going to become a bullfrog. And I'll put it here so we can see it. Can, can you get that? Can you get that tadpole in there? Or do I have to move it up? So We're trying to show you the tadpole. You got it. So that is a tadpole from a bullfrog. They're very common, and uh, you can find them almost anywhere. Now this one's in, going into one of the second stages. I don't know if you can see the legs. The legs are coming out of the back. And then that other thing, they call it a mystery sh snail. They don't um, really know what it is, so I think that's why they call it that. Now I got this at a fish store because I don't like to take anything out of the woods and as soon as it gets into its frog state it will go back and
and I'll put it in the water. So you might see frogs and toads, especially around um, next month or two, you'll see little froglets that are about as big as a penny and they'll be hopping along and they'll go in from the pond and, and going into the grass and then they'll go back into the pond again. So keep an eye out for those also. Now turtles, this is a snapping turtle. See the long tail and the ridged back. See these little bumps on it? And see those little things back there? That's a snapping turtle. Now turtles don't have teeth, they have a beak. That's what I'm sort of touching right there. That is a beak. Uh, turtle shells can't come off. Some people think they can, but they cannot come off. So we've got the Plasterdon and we've got the Carapace here. That's the names they call it. You can see the nails on this one. Now he has a very strong bite and they can get really, really big. Uh, um, one of the uh, uh, streams that we go by, they, they have really big ones. They're almost as big as a can, garbage can lid. So, But I wouldn't touch this. You see, um, one of these happened to come out of the water. Sometimes they sit on the edge of the water and they bask and let the sun get on themselves. So you might see those or you might see this one. This is still a baby. I think this is about two now. This is a map turtle, and it's here in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you can see it's the yellow spots on it. Let me see if I can get them to put them out. Can you get those yellow spots? Huh? Can you get them? Those are not eyes. Those are markings on him. His eyes are in the front. When the eyes are in the front, that means that, I mean, on the sides, that means he's really not a predator. So he usually gets eaten by somebody else. But he does eat um, insects for me, and he likes a lot of um, uh, plants and things. This is his job, and he's flickering around there like that. Um, this happens to be a girl. I guess I shouldn't say he because the shell is flat on the bottom. When it's flat, it's a girl. If it has a curve in it, then it's a boy. And map turtles have pretty long tails. Let me see if I can get him to sort of walk away and put his tail out. Come on, put your tail out there, Brittany. Nope, she's hiding her tail underneath. But if you see a baby turtle, uh, don't pick it up. I have it in my hand, but um, it does have... Uh, some like germs on the back that wouldn't be good if you didn't wash your hands well and you touched your face or you ate. So never pick up a baby turtle and uh, that's because its shell isn't all closed off yet. So if you see one, watch it go. Don't pick it up. And don't take anything out of the woods when you're walking because if everybody went into the woods and they took something because they wanted to bring it home, there wouldn't be anything left. Here's another turtle. This was adopted. I don't go and take anything out of the woods. So this is a painted turtle. Look at the design on that shell. It almost looks like a rainbow. Can you see that? I'll put it up here. You got that? Mm -hmm. And then on the bottom, it looks like a sunset. This is a painted turtle. We have them here. They can get much bigger. They like to go in and out of the water. And um, this is also a girl. Shell's flat. And they can move pretty fast. Now, if you ever see a turtle, and maybe mom or dad is driving, and it's on the road, and mom and dad stop, the way it's going across the across across the road is you would take it across and take it the way that it's facing. Because if you put it on this side, 
it's just going to go and do that again and go back the same way because they're determined on which way they want to go. Now, let's see, I have a turtle. Now I want to show you something else you might see. I don't want you to just remember, don't take anything out of the woods. Because you, if you do, uh, you have to have a fishing license or somebody with you with a fishing license. And they only want you to do one and they keep an eye on you. So this is, she's pretty old now. This is a tiger salamander. They eat bugs. They burrow in the mud. They go in and out of the water to keep their skin wet. She loves to eat crickets for me. She's pretty old. I've had her many, many years already. But this is a pretty cute face. You might see smaller things than this, too, that sort of look like the salamander and, and there's all kinds there's dusky salamanders that I find in my backyard sometimes and then I can see them under a rock when I pick the rock up they're under there because it's damp I can look at them but if you pick them up and your hand isn't wet they can't breathe because they breathe through their skin and if your hand's dry and you're carrying it all around, it won't make it. So you have to be very careful. You can look at it and then put the rock down gently. And if you come back next day or the day after, you will probably be able to see it there because that's its home. This, that little water bug that I showed you in the first uh, little example of the little stream I had there, this is a... The, how big that water bug gets. This is called the giant water bug. And I was told to remove it from the place that I was working. And I didn't want to kill it, so I brought it home and I put it in my fish tank. But I didn't look it up. I just put it in the fish tank. I had some small fish in there, not many. And the next morning I came and there was five fish and then there was only two. Well, when I looked it up, I found out this giant water bug ate fish. So sometimes you got to look things up. But this is a giant water bug, and that was found in a, in a little pond called Lake Elizabeth around here. They didn't want it in there. Now this is a baby wood turtle, and somebody brought the eggs to um, the old science center when it first opened and we had hatched the eggs and there was seven eggs and we were, we were going to take them back because you're not allowed to remove eggs like that from the, the, the woods either. It's, it's against the law. And we let them hatch but this one didn't make it. We called them after the seven dwarfs, dopey, sleepy, happy, etc. And um, the white thing there is the egg. The egg is sort of soft when a turtle lays its eggs. And you can sort of squish it. It's not like a chicken egg. And then after the little turtle comes out, the shell starts to shrivel up like that. That's how snake eggs are also. So we have those little baby turtles that could be wandering around. But it's not something that you should take out of the woods. Now if you go to the beach, sometimes you see lots and lots of shells. Now this happens to be my shell collection. It's rather large. And uh, I put the names on. It takes a long time to look them up and find out what they were. But I have a shell collection. I have some bigger ones too, but all my little ones I put in here. so. That way I can remember what they are. Everybody likes to collect a, shell, collect a shell or two. Now, one of my favorite shells is this one. Look at that inside of that. It looks like a rainbow. It's called an abalone shell. And people make necklaces out of the 
the inside of this and they call them Mabaloni necklaces because that's the name. I uh, can remember it. I always remembered it because my mom, my mom thought I was telling a tall tale. She'd say, ah, baloney. That's the name of this shell. So this shell has holes here. And it used to have a bottom. But I didn't get that from my friend who gave it to me. Uh, but it would, it would open up slightly, let water into it. And then it would digest the... Uh, small little crustaceans or whatever they brought in and then it would squirt water out there to move so while it was squirting the water it would go along the bottom this up here is a barnacle these are all barnacles they don't hurt the shell but they grow on almost everything boats anything that's near the water a barnacle could grow usually there's a small like looks like a worm-like animal inside and it comes out and it feeds on plankton and other uh, plants in the water and then it goes back in. That's a barnacle. Now, shells grow like we grow. Here's the baby. Here's the big one. Now, I don't know if this is the biggest one in the world, but it's pretty big. But that's a small abalone. Hey, hey, get back in there. My salamander was trying to sneak out. <laughs> now, when I go to the zoo, there's a whole tank of these. Check it out. What do you think it is? Look at those teeth. Sort of got a rounded body. But the teeth should give it away. It's called a piranha. Now, we don't have piranhas around here, but if you go to the zoo or an aquarium, you might see a piranha in there. And um, the teeth are even sharp on this model. Someone gave me this as a present, and I get weird presents like that. I get stuffed animals and things, so that is what a piranha looks like. And that's about the size of them, but they travel in a, a whole group and... They could really rip something apart that's much larger than they are. Another thing you might see if you go on vacation is a horseshoe crab. These are very important because a lot of their blood and everything is used uh, in medicine. It helps people. And they take care of them and they don't want them to disappear. The, this shell was found on the beach. Here's the bottom if you want to see the backbone and everything. So this isn't the biggest ones. There's some way bigger. And then this is a baby one. So we've got a baby one. And we've got a bigger one. So yeah, they all grow up. Just like we grow up, they grow up. And each of the animals that are in the water, or beside the water, they have jobs to do. So one last one I want to show you. This is called a moon crab. These are baby ones. And these are also cleaners of the beach. Just like a hermit crab that you might have as a pet, they clean the beach. So everything has a job in nature. That's why we don't want to just take something out, out of nature without thinking because if we all did that, Everything on earth would go out of balance. Well, I think my time's up. Thank you for coming to the pond with me today.